So over the last few videos, we've been introduced to hyperbolic functions, <clears throat> learned some of their uh, properties and uh, domains and ranges and graphs and that sort of thing, but we haven't really done any calculus yet. We haven't taken any of their derivatives or anything like that. So in this video, that's what we're going to begin. We're going to look at um, hyperbolic derivatives or derivatives of hyperbolic functions. <clears throat> now, there's six main uh, hyperbolic functions, and so it takes some time to derive all six. So we're not going to derive all six. We're going to uh, derive one or two, and then I'll, get, I'll give you the uh, list for the, uh, for the rest of them, which are uh, derived in a similar way. Okay, so for, uh, for the first ones here, let's look at the derivative for uh, hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine, two of our main hyperbolic functions. Now, uh, before I just tell you what they are, let, let's think about this for a, for a minute here. If you recall, hyperbolic sine was defined <clears throat> in terms of exponential functions, e to the x and e to the minus x. Uh, technically, it was e to the x minus e to the negative x divided by 2. That was uh, how hyperbolic sine was defined. And uh, hyperbolic cosine was the same thing, but with a plus sign instead of a minus sign. So just, just think about this for a minute here. If you're trying to take his derivative, that really is an effect like trying to take his derivative. So how would you take the derivative of something like this? Uh, well, without writing out uh, a lot of the details, first of all, you notice that the one half for the whole expression is a tag along constant that could be either moved outside the derivative temporarily. Um, technically, you could do a quotient rule if you wanted to, since it's a fraction, that's a little overkill. There is, uh, there's an easier way to differentiate this, since two is just a, a tag along constant. Really, we just have to differentiate this numerator. So let's, let's think back to Calc 1. What's the derivative for e to the x? What's the derivative for e to the x? Well, it's uh, e to the x, okay? What's the derivative for e to the negative x? Well, it would be negative e to the negative x due to the chain rule. You probably remember the chain rule. Because there's already a negative on the outside, it'll be changed to a positive because you have a negative negative, makes a positive. Uh, e to the minus x, we copy that exponential term. And then we have our 1 half, or, or divided by 2, which is our tag along constant. Now, look at this guy here for a moment. Who is that? Who is this guy? Huh. Interestingly enough, this is hyperbolic cosine. See, this is um, the definition of hyperbolic cosine. So we learned something. The derivative for hyperbolic sine was hyperbolic cosine. Let's do the same thing for hyperbolic cosine. The, again, the um, one half that's uh, in the expression is a tag along one half. Derivative for e to the x is e to the x. Derivative for e to the negative x is minus e to the minus x, all over 2, of course, right? That 1 half tag along constant. So who is this? Who does he look like? Um, well, hey, that's hyperbolic sine of x. It's very interesting. So it turns out that one of these guys is the derivative of the other and vice versa. That's a strong indication as to why... Um, when, when this uh, topic was being constructed and uh, discovered, that they chose this notation for these new guys called hyperbolic functions. It was partially due to the fact that, hyper, uh, that this function and this function were, in some sense, each other's derivatives. And so if this is f and this is f prime, or if you call this g and this is g prime, uh, because they have that forward backwards relationship among derivatives that contributed to the fact of them being labeled more like hyperbolic um, sine and cosine and, and that sort of thing. There are other reasons, that's not the only reason, but that was, that was one reason that was a, a contributing factor, okay? So, uh, so if you look here, um, or let me put that back. Uh, watch the screen here. These are going to change. I'm simply going to change their wording. The derivative for hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosine. Derivative for hyperbolic cosine is now hyperbolic sine. So that's a, a big, big key. And that's kind of the launching point of how we're going to uh, derive the, the rest of the derivatives for hyperbolic tangent and cosecant and hyperbolic cotangent and those sorts of things. Uh, one thing I want to stress before we move on, though, 
uh, a common, common mistake by students is they will say, okay, derivative for hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosine. That's absolutely correct. Uh, it mirrors the trig derivative that we're all accustomed to. And they'll say that the derivative for hyperbolic cosine is negative hyperbolic sine to match the trig uh, relative to these guys. But in fact, there is no negative. The derivative of hyperbolic cosine is not negative hyperbolic sine. It's just regular, regular plain Jane you know, hyperbolic sign. So there's never any change in sign when you take one of their derivatives and it, and it turns into to another one. It's a very common mistake that students make. And it's, uh, it's easy, easy to make that mistake. Okay, so now, um, I, sorry that was kind of a long discussion. Here's a condensed list of the derivatives you need to know. The first two we've done already, derivative for hyperbolic sign is hyperbolic cosine. The derivative for hyperbolic cosine is hyperbolic sine. We know those two. Here's your new ones. And uh, you'll notice some similarities, some strong similarities to uh, trig derivatives that are uh, similar to name to these guys. The derivative for hyperbolic tangent is um, hyperbolic secant squared. And that matches the derivative for tangent being secant squared for, you know, just regular trig um, trig functions that's just an amazing property that, that these would be so similar number four the derivative for hyperbolic secant is negative hyperbolic secant hyperbolic tangent there is a subtle difference here this is the kind of the same thing that happened with the hyperbolic cosine derivative um, for trig functions that negative is not there but for our derivatives for hyperbolic derivatives that change in sign is there. So don't forget it. It's easy to forget. Number five, derivative of hyperbolic cosecant is negative hyperbolic cosecant, hyperbolic cotangent. Uh, again, very similar to the, its trigonometric counterpart. And derivative for hyperbolic cotangent is negative hyperbolic cosecant squared. So again, all six of these have very close similarities to uh, trig derivatives by similar names. So that should at least help you. <laughs> I would think it would at least help a little bit uh, memorize these guys. What I would recommend to you uh, as a student trying to learn these, I would get six flashcards and just go through them again and again and again uh, until you can get them and they make sense and, uh, and that you're able to, to memorize them. So anyways, that's how we um, take hyperbolic derivatives. Um, next, we'll probably look at some examples where we actually take some derivatives of uh, some uh, hyperbolic functions. Last thing I mentioned before I let you go is keep in mind, I didn't mention this earlier, um, the chain rule still applies. If you're taking the derivative of hyperbolic sine of something other than x, like 5x plus 2 or e to the x minus 1 or whatever, whatever, um, the chain rule still applies. So you can still do hyperbolic cosine of u um, times u prime. All those, all those old rules still fit. So anyways, I hope that helps you better understand uh, hyperbolic derivatives just a little bit.